Hello everyone, welcome to a new video from my channel. In this video, we're gonna be discussing about a project called Air Quality Index Prediction using long short term memory neural networks. The reason I chose LSTM neural networks is that those category of neural networks are very good at remembering sequence wise information and they are suitable very well for this project because we are going to be using a time series data set. Let's get into our project. First, as usually in any data science, machine learning or deep learning project, we import the necessary libraries and dependencies. First, pandas, numpy, which is standard. Pandas is to store your data in the form of data frame, which is a neat tabular representation of your data. Seaborn and matplotlib are used for visualization, where you can plot different kinds of graphs, like scatter, graphs or any uh, kind of graphs for that matter and then we'll be importing the pre-processing module from scikit-learn also known as sklearn we also import accuracy score from the metrics module and then standard scalar for normalizing or scaling our data so that the values of all the features fit in a single format and then we'll import tensorflow and keras related modules for the implementation of a deep learning model or lsta model in our project so and then we'll also be uh, importing mean square error from scikit-learn.metrics because using that we will be uh, evaluating the loss function of our model. Uh, we'll also be importing LSTM sequential dens from keras.layers or keras.models. So every time we, we need not write keras.layers.lstm or keras.layers.dens, we can just write LSTM or dens. And then from keras, we also import optimize here because we'll be using different kinds of optimizers to see which one fits the best for our model. So let's start by putting in the data. So the data is in the CSV format, which stands for Comma Separated Value. And the name of our data set is data.csv. So using pandas, we can use the read CSV function and specify as parameter the name of the file. And then we'll store it in a variable called df, which stands for data frame. So once we print that, we can see all the kinds of columns and values that are present. So we have the number, which is basically the index, year, month, day, hour. And then these are the concentrations of different pollutants in the air. So PM 2.5, PM 10, SO2, NO2, CO and O3 are the different kinds of pollutants we'll be predicting in this project. So the year goes from 2013 to 2017. And this data was recorded for each hour of each day of each month of each year, ranging from 2013 to 2017. Also, we have other features like temperature, pressure, dew point, rain, wind speed, wind speed per minute. I mean, uh, sorry, wind direction. Uh, these are the features which are not uh, very important, actually not at all important. So we'll be dropping all these columns later. And um, using the info method on the data frame, it gives you some neat little information about all the columns. Suppose, for example, we can see that there are 31,896 non-null. And for example, the number column has data type as in 64. So year, month, day, hour, and then, yeah, all these columns are of type integers. And then the pollutants concentration starting from PM 2.5 until NO2, go go into float category so here it says non-null so there are these many entries whose value is not equal to zero and then we can use the head method on the data frame to get a neat tabular way of representation if you see at the top by just printing we don't get any margins or columns and rows distinction which is not neat so using the head method gives a neat representation and then uh, we can use the shape attribute on the data frame which gives the number of rows and number of columns in this case we have approximately 32k rows and 17 columns after the uh, info method another very important method to get the statistics of your column is the describe method so by default describe method works in pandas only for numerical columns so uh, you may not see if you're working on any other data set or project for categorical variables you won't be able to see the output of the describe uh, method. So here we can see the mean of each column, standard deviation, the minimum value, the maximum value, and then the median, which is 50%, and then the median of, of the data starting from zero until median, which is 25%, and then starting from median until the end, 
the median of that range is 75%. So uh, you can get uh, an idea of the distribution of each of the column and the values using this function. Okay, a uh, very uh, important problem which occurs in a lot of data science and machine learning projects is the existence of null values. So we want to make sure that we get, of, get rid of all the null values in each and every column. So we can use the is null method. Just by using the is null method, it will return a Boolean output, which means the output consists of only true and false. So in Python and in most of the programming languages, true holds a value of one, false holds a value of zero. So by using the sum method on this output, we can get the number of null values. So basically it's just summing all the true values. It's very good to know that uh, the columns from number to O3, which are very important for our project, and those are the columns that we'll be using, have no null values. Uh, starting from temperature to wind speed per minute has like 20, 75, and 14 null values. Since these columns are not important, we don't care about it. And then uh, above, we got the number of null values here. So we need to drop all those null values. For that, we can use a method called drop any on the data frame. So if you just execute the command df to drop any, it's gonna drop all the null values only for that uh, for the current execution of the cell. So and then if you repeat this command df dot is null dot sum, you're gonna see that these null values will exist again. So we have to assign that to our data frame. So uh, by doing this, we are overwriting the data frame. So uh, we'll have to split our data set into training and testing. So since we have data starting from 2013 until 2017, I decided to use the data of 2016 and 2017 as a testing set. So to get the index so that we can slice accordingly, I have used Boolean masking, which is uh, when the year column is equal to equal to 2016, uh, give me all the entries starting from that. So by that we get the starting index as 24,865. So in the next cell, we can use this uh, index as, as the ending of slicing operator for the training set. So X train will have all the values starting from index zero and until 24,864. So when you use the slice operator, it is first here you give the starting value, uh, colon and then ending value. The ending value is not gonna be counted. So starting from zero to 24,864, we have 24,865 values. So these are all the columns, but only those many rows. And then uh, what we'll be predicting first, we'll be going step by step. Here you can see that PM 2.5 concentration is the first thing. So we'll be predicting that first. So uh, using X train of PM 2.5, we're extracting only that particular column, which is a target or label class, then assigning it to a new variable called Y train. So now we're done with the training set. And then for the testing set, we start from 24,865 and go on until uh, 31,898. Here, using the shape attribute, we, we saw that there are 31,896 rows. So yeah, do it accordingly. And then after getting all the testing rows, that is uh, from those start until end indices, we extract only the PM 2.5 column and assign it as the testing set. So you can use the print testing set to see approximately we have 6,950 entries for the testing set, which is approximately 21%. So here I've used the count method on the testing set indices divided by the total number of rows or entries, which is df.shape of zero. Bas uh, df.shape basically gives number of rows common number of columns. When you access the first element or give an index of zero, you get the number of rows and multiplying by 100 gives you in the form of percentage.